welcome to Marissa's Kitchen. This is a video that I filmed so long ago and I put a ton of work into and it was so piecemeal. I often thought maybe I should just refilm this one, but I didn't have the heart to get rid of it because I put a lot of time and effort in it. So it's pretty rough. I'm probably exaggerating a little to say it's the worst bread tutorial ever, but you might just notice some oddities about it. And my daughter is three now. I She's a baby in this. Like you hear her in the background, you don't really see her, but um, that's how long ago that I filmed this. So if you followed my channel for a little while, you know that getting videos out has been a struggle and this is one that was a labor of love and it's it's pretty rough but i'm just gonna put it out there into youtube land and those that want to benefit from it can benefit from it and those who don't want to watch it because it's just kind of all over the place that's fine too so hope that you enjoy if you want to <laughs> to Marissa's Kitchen. I'm Marissa and today I'm going to show you a bread recipe that is really, really cheap and really easy. And I also did a video about this bread recipe as a pizza crust and I will link to that above. And that's one way that you can use this dough. I have also made this dough into focaccia bread, which is really delicious to have with soup. And tonight I am just making a loaf. I originally found this recipe on the Gwen's Nest website and she has an awesome THM starter thing that you can find on her website. So I highly recommend her website. And this is where I got introduced to this bread method. My baby is really noisy right now, but my husband has her. So if you hear her, she's just a little complainer sometimes, but she is well taken care of. So in case you like, okay, um, go get your baby. This is a tutorial I started a couple days ago. And so you're going to see me in the kitchen a couple days ago. And then I'm going to, it comes back to today where I'm baking and yeah, uh, let's get started. Today I'm going to show you how very simple it is to make homemade bread using a certain method. Gwen's Nest is where, is a website that I first learned about this kind of making bread and how easy it was. And then I was given this book, Artesian Bread in Five Minutes a Day, and it has been just kind of a life changer for me of knowing that you can make really delicious bread really easily. So I wanted to show you just how simple it is. It's only four ingredients, one of which is water. So really it's just three ingredients. If you wanna have bread to eat the same day, you can get sprouted flour. I buy this on Amazon, but sometimes it's available, sometimes it isn't, which is kind of frustrating. Or you can use regular whole wheat flour. You also need yeast, just regular old yeast and kosher salt. So I have here, a, I'm making a half batch because it's easier for me to mix. I have a cup and a half of water in my container, water that I heated to about 100 degrees. And then I mixed in, uh, uh, making a half batch, it's a half, half of a tablespoon, no, one and a half tablespoons. So it's supposed to be one and a half tablespoons and half of that, yeah, is three fourths of a tablespoon, which is four and a half teaspoons. Quick correction, I went back and watched my video. It's four and a half teaspoons if you're making the whole batch. If you are making half, see this is where it gets confusing. It would only be two and a quarter. Of salt and sometimes I do a little bit less salt just for flavor taste wise. And then three and a quarter cup flour. So that's what I'm gonna measure in right now is the flour. I'm just going to mix this up until it's evenly wet and then I'm going to leave it on my counter for two hours and then I'm going to stick it in the fridge and I can either bake it this evening um, or I can leave it in the fridge evening um, or I can leave it in the fridge up to two weeks. I have it pretty much almost mixed up and I just wanted to show you what the dough will look like um, when you are done mixing it up. You want to make sure not to have any dry spots in the corners. If it is whole wheat flour, you are going to wait three days to consume this. That is because it self-ferments and eats the carbs and for some reason it's like 
hippie magic and you can eat it in three days. It is not a low carb bread, but it is a lower carb bread than using just whole wheat by itself and eating it that same day. Okay guys, I have my bread sitting here ready to rise. In two hours, I will stick it in the fridge. It is easier to work with. Um, the sprouted dough actually isn't too bad um, when you make it with sprouted whole wheat flour. It's easier to work with than regular whole wheat flour. Doing it at room temperature really isn't a big deal, but it um, they recommend putting it in the fridge for a few hours before you handle it later. Okay, this is after a couple hours. You can see how much it's risen, and that's the white. You can see the difference here. Sprouted flour is not gonna rise as much as white flour, but at this point, you stick it in the fridge, and you can either use it you need to let it stay in the fridge for about two to three hours and you can use it today or you can let it sit in the fridge for um, up to two weeks. Hey guys, so it's been a day, a couple days, and I baked up the loaf that night, but with my family around, it was like I couldn't film. And so it is a couple days later and I'm just gonna show you um, making this into a loaf now. So this is um, my dough with half of it. It was like up to here um, and I used Part of it so this is what it looks like right now um, you can kind of see uh, I don't know just the texture of it I wish you could smell it it kind of has like a fermenty kind of smell I put some cornmeal on here if you don't have a baking peel and cornmeal you can use an upside down cookie sheet and parchment paper now I will say that if you look at the back of parchment paper we are going to be heating up the oven to 450 and that is higher than you should actually use parchment paper. So this is sort of a use at your own risk um, if you're going to use parchment paper. What I did is I have put the dough ball on the parchment paper and come back later and after it rises cut the parchment paper to make it just a little bit bigger than the actual bread dough. And that way it doesn't have all these corners that could get really brown and start on fire. And I actually saw on Facebook that a Trim Healthy Mom put on the Facebook group that her parchment paper started on fire. So I'm just putting that out there that if you choose to do it that route, which I have done numbers of times since starting this to do this recipe and it has worked fine without any burning problems, but do it at your own risk, okay? So but you can use an upside down cookie sheet. So I have that prepared. And if this was white dough, I would need to be sure to really flour the top of it, like sprinkle some flour and shake it around. But this dough is easier to handle than regular whole wheat flour. But I am gonna go ahead and just grab out a little bit of sprouted flour on my hands just to get them a little bit um, floury. And I'm gonna go ahead and grab this out. And <laughs> it's already almost in a in the shape that it needs to be. Um, I wish I should have I should have showed you this with the white dough because it doesn't work as well as sprouted. You are gonna make this into a ball and you're supposed to do a gluten cloak, which is where you kind of stretch the dough um, from the top around. And I, honestly, it just doesn't work very well. There's the gluten fibers must not, it just doesn't work as well um, with with the sprouted flour. So you're not gonna get as smooth of a, of a dough ball as you would, um, like, again, you're trying to grab it and stretch, um, but then you get this sort of thing going on. So, uh, yeah, it's just not gonna be as pretty. Um, in fact, I'm wondering if I should have gone the other way with it. Okay, we're gonna try this. I am not making this look easy or pretty, but I'm telling you, this really is easy. Okay. So this is not working very good. I knew I should have made it that first night. And so this is cold. And that's one nice thing about the cold dough is that, um, I should have just gone with my original one. Okay, um, there we go. I'm, I'm pleased with that. It's not the prettiest, but I'm gonna go ahead and set this on my um, cornmeal and that's it. Okay, so I'm gonna leave this now for 20 minutes. The reason it's called five minutes artesian bread in five minutes a day is because the actual time that you're handling or mixing the dough does not take long at all. It's time that you have to have allotted for, but it's not active time that you're doing something with the dough. It's just sitting there. So you could be doing other things in your kitchen. So two nights ago, my son Dawson helped me make soup for dinner 
and the dough's just resting and rising while we're doing other things. So it's not complicated. As you saw, I just basically took it out of this container, formed it into a ball. I had a little problems with it, but, and plopped it onto, you could do it on your parchment paper, cookie sheet, or on your pizza peel. So that's gonna sit for a total of 40 minutes, but in 20 minutes, actually I set my timer, I have 13 minutes here, I'm going to turn on my oven to 450. And in your oven, if you have a baking stone, you want your baking stone in the middle of the oven. And you also need a broiler. <laughs> Mine's a mess because I use it so much for this, but you need a the bottom of a broiler pan. You don't need the rack part of the broiler pan. And you're gonna stick that on the rack below your baking stone. And that needs to get hot as well. So when I turn on my oven to 450, I need to have my baking stone and my broiler pan in there, in the oven. I went ahead and I prepared my baking peel. This was a birthday gift that I got. And then I'm gonna come back in just a few minutes and cut some slits. I'm gonna dust this with flour and cut some slits in the top. And then it's gonna sit for the other 20 minutes before I hopefully successfully fling this thing into the oven, not fling, but you know, whatever, you gotta have, there's like an art to it, you know, <laughs> like you gotta learn a good pizza peel, um, push, whatever, okay. And I forgot to mention, if you don't have a baking stone, use an upside down cookie sheet. So you do not have to invest in a baking stone in order to make this bread. I thought the crust was amazingly crispy and crusty on the outside, even with using the baking sheet until I got the stone as a Christmas gift. Okay, uh, the other thing I wanted to mention, the dough being cold is works to your advantage that when you put this in the oven, um, you're gonna bake it for 30 minutes and you don't have to worry about it drying out. That is one advantage of it being in the fridge and getting cold is that you're not gonna end up with a dry bread. I think that was everything I was gonna say. All right, I'll see you in a little bit. All right, it's been 20 minutes. I'm going to go ahead and turn my oven on now to 450. I have this loaf of dough here and I was going back and forth in my mind on whether I was gonna show you. I have found just dipping my brush in in the flour and then uh, brushing it on the loaf um, is one way that you can do it. The other day this was not clean because we had used it for something else and so I simply just took my hand and sprinkled some on top. You don't want too much and then just kind of rubbed it around. So you could do whichever way that you prefer. What you're trying to do is just create a little bit of a, we're about to run the knife through the dough. And so uh, we're just making it so the knife doesn't stick. Go ahead and um, the, I really recommend getting the Artesian Bread in five minutes a day book um, because you are gonna learn so much from that book. But they talk about the different ways that you can put it, you know, a, what kind of design to put on the top of your bread. And I'm making what is supposed to be sort of like a scallop, but I have not mastered it by any means. It does not look nearly as pretty. <laughs> I will show you my white loaf that I made the other night because that turned out actually really pretty. All right, this is the loaf that I made with the white dough. I just wanted to show you what it would look like coming out as the white bread. It's got a nice hard crust on there. Um, this loaf turned out really good <laughs> and so the sprouted won't look nearly this nice but I just wanted to show you this is what it looks like if you use white flour to make the artesian bread. You're just gonna go ahead and cut this. It is not clear to me in the book whether you should be slicing this when you still have 20 minutes left or if you want to slice it right before you put it in the oven but I am doing it. Uh, I'm gonna do it now and then it's gonna sit for 20 more minutes. I would love to learn how to make those like leaf patterns that people do on bread that look so nice. So that's it. I'm just going to leave this to sit now for another 20 minutes. I'm going to go ahead and set my timer and I'm actually going to go ahead and just do 19 um, because a minute of that, I was cutting it, but a minute of that can count. 19 minutes and then we're going to flip this into the oven and let it bake for half hour. All right, it's been 20 minutes and I'm about to get this loaf in the oven. I, what you need is a cup of hot tap water and you need to make have made sure that you had your broiler pan in, in there. If you haven't put it in there, go ahead and stick it in there and let it get hot for a few minutes. But I'm gonna set this down so that you can see my oven. And we'll see, I already tried to figure this out so that you could see in my oven. We'll see if this will work. And this part you wanna do really quick, okay? Um, so. I'm gonna flip this dough in there and then 
I love how professional I am in my videos. Um, you're going to flip this in there quick, and then we've got to quick grab the hot water and pour it into the broiler pan. So let's see if we can do this. One trick that I do, I'm going to get a spatula, um, with my bread, if I have it on my pizza peel, is I grab a spatula and I kind of just lift up and make sure and, and give it a shake to make sure that I can move it around and it's not stuck on there. Okay, so then I'm going to open this real quick. I'm going to flip my, my dough in there. That worked well. And I'm going to close that just for a second while I grab my, <laughs> this is very awkward. Okay. Now I'm going to real quick grab my cup of water and put it in the broiler pan. And I don't know if you can see quite what I'm doing. Oh, okay. I got to figure out videoing techniques. Ooh, okay. I just... Please do this more carefully than I just did it. So you're gonna pour that hot water in there and quick close. And now hot water is going to create a steam that is going to help create a crispy crust. Okay, so you are gonna bake this for 30 minutes. And if you did use um, a pizza peel with cornmeal, you do wanna turn on your fan or vent above your oven because it the cornmeal can smoke. Um, that is just a side All right, time to get the bread out of the oven. Let's see how it did. Oh, that's looking pretty good. And you can either use tongs or your spatula to get it out. And I am gonna go ahead and set it over here on um, this cooling rack. If you leave it on parchment paper or on a pan, it's gonna get soggy on the bottom. So you wanna put it on a cooling rack. All right, let's slice into this loaf and see what it looks like inside. That looks pretty good and still nice and moist on the inside. One trick to slicing bread that I read about is you can slice from the bottom and then you, it won't tear the top of your bread and it'll slice a lot nicer. Well, that's a thick, nice thick slice. <laughs> um, yeah, turned out good. I'm pleased with it. Easy cleanup hack for your, if you're not gonna make, you can, you can either go ahead and make um, more bread dough without washing it. If you're not gonna make more bread dough, let it sit out, not covered, and it will dry out. And then it's really easy to just throw this in the garbage and then what you have left to wash off comes off really easy. So you don't get like all sorts of bread dough stuck on your rag, your cleaning brush <laughs> that you use for dishes. So that was just a little hack for cleaning up um, your bread container. Mm -hmm.